We respectfully acknowledge the past and present traditional owners of this territory and their unique role in the life of the region. Harborfront Centre is committed to honouring Indigenous peoples' unique cultural and spiritual relationships to the land and waters and their rich contribution to society. Toronto is on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples and is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We ask that you respect the land and traditions of those who walked upon it for millennia before us. In addition, please consider the land that you are currently residing on and reflect on your relationship with the Indigenous peoples around you. This is an opportunity to do further research and learn more about the peoples who have cared for the land around you. Hello. Meet the Press is an all-volunteer collective devoted to promoting micro, small and independent literary presses within the Greater Toronto Area. This new collective has come together in the spirit of the original Meet the Presses event begun in Toronto in the mid-80s by Nicholas Power and Stuart Ross. Members of the new Meet the Presses organize a variety of curated public events that interest them, and all the events focus on independent publishers of fiction, poetry, and creative nonfiction. Meet the Presses' flagship event is a literary market focused on sales of literary books, chapbooks, magazines, and recordings. Meet the Press's Indie Literary Market is a curated event. That is, the participating publishers are chosen by the Meet the Press's collective. The Indie Literary Market gives the public an opportunity to meet local literary presses and directly purchase publications that may not be readily available or available at all in bookstores and other commercial outlets. It is regrettably on hiatus till further notice. Keep an eye out on our website for news of its return. This new incarnation of Meet the Presses, an unfunded and nonprofit collective, was founded by five former coordinators of this Toronto Small Press Book Fair and five local writers and small pressers. Meet the Presses members are Gary Barwin, Paul Dutton, Kyle Flemmer, Renee Sergini Saklakar, Aaron Tucker, Jacqueline Valencia, and Tali Baran. Founding members Emeritus are Maria Erskine, Ali Fleming, Beth Follett, Maggie Helwig, Lee Nash, Nick Power, and Stuart Ross. Hello, I'm Stephen Ross Smith, and I'm by a sculpture called The Moss Lady in Beacon Hill Park in Victoria, British Columbia, on the lands of the Laguangan peoples. The sculpture was made by artist Dale Dobert. I chose this tranquil spot to tell you why I love the small press. Small presses are big. They make the book exciting, liberated. What is a small press? I take it to mean independent, labor of love, grassroots publishers. It can range from the efforts of one individual to a publishing cooperative, to a grant-funded regional press. I'm going to speak mostly of the small, small press, chapbook publishers. In Toronto in the early 70s, I learned that you could make your own or others' works into books, chapbooks usually, renegade books, handmade and hands-on, tiny books, odd-shaped books, thread-bound books, boxed books, sculptural books, books with materials like cloth, wood, cardboard, handmade papers, even matchbooks, toothpicks, and nails. And these can incorporate typographic text or handwritten scrawl, visual imagery, or sonic matter. A small book assembler can do anything they can envision, finance, and realize. It's an art and it's a craft. I was influenced by the likes of B.P. Nickel with his Gronk series. I fell in with chapbook makers Michael Dean, John Riddell, and J.W. Curry, to name a few. I helped found Underwitch Editions, a cooperative which published chapbooks and audio cassettes in the 70s and 80s. Decades later, I've collaborated on three chapbooks from Saskatoon's Jack Pine Press, and recently, Indie Press in Regina, Radiant Press, published my fiction collection, Glimmer. Small presses enable eccentric work to appear. A 
experimental writing, short works, conceptual pieces, formal innovation, writing not embraced by the, can I say, more linear big press world. Indie press publications often have modest yet keen expectations. Small print runs often hand distributed through a network of friends, colleagues, fellow writers and fans. On the street, at readings, at cafes and gatherings like meet the presses. This is the foundational underground of publishing. It is a brimming, bustling, productive, exciting ecology. Small presses are presses worth meeting. As I'm here by the Moss Lady, I'll read a piece from True Moss Suite, my work in progress. I hope a small press will publish it one day. Black Rock Moss, Andrea Rupestris. You, tall one with the cell, cell phone, phosphorescent, demanding, streaming screen. You, bend to the pubic adherent Andrea, her dark red tufts, moist, widely spreading, her sporophytes raised on short stalks, her capsules black, shaped like footballs that call for passes long and deep and grappling tackles, or fondle her spinny spindles, their woolly yarding. She clings high and low along the coast to acidic rock, granitic, psychedelic, jimmied or graced, slick she is when wet. A poet hums his age, rabbits, haze, no hymn to Moss's underfootedness. The poet zones out to lava lamps, pulsing stroboscopic stop-go light, shimmer rhythm candelabra melt, synced up, psyched up, plasticine pliancy. Andrea's leaves are round or star-shaped, a catch of earth and night sky. She's lusty, upbeat, rocking on. Poet zones back into Andrea's wet and wide, tufty red, black and contrapuntal, scared so on a cushion, her tenacious grace, her tough and fluffy clutch. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Kalia, my videographer, and rock on, small presses. Hello, everyone who is here for the BP Nickel Chatbook Award event for this year. Uh, and have a hello to everyone from Meet the Presses. My name is Sonnet Labay and I am here on Snanaimuk territory. Uh, and I'm just thankful uh, to be invited to share some work with you. I was the winner of the BP Nickel Chapbook Award for 2017 for Anima Canadensis. And uh, since my last book in the past three years or so, I've been exploring writing um, to voice directly from my vocal cords and lungs into the air to you. So instead of putting, putting writing words to, to put on a page, um, I've been exploring writing words for the tonal grid that is Western music and uh, exploring some Carnatic music too. But I, I'll share this, this song that I've been working on, still in progress. It's called Song for Ile Shine. Off the highway south of Winnipeg in 1983 was a little town where I was brown and people couldn't see. Yeah, just south of Winnipeg, off Highway 403, was a little French Canadian town, hadn't seen the likes of me. The 
Gave the cold eye to my mother at the local grocery store. At me, they hurled those good old words I'd never heard before. Teacher looked the other way, fists of gravel in the yard. Mom said, keep your eyes down and it won't go so hard. Mom said, keep your eyes down and it won't go so hard. Hey, Madame La, I was born here just like you. In this idea of a country we're all living through. Hey, Monsieur La, I was born here just like you. In this idea of a country we're all living through. Up at Saint Vital, they had my dad braid bright Saint Sur Fleche. They told me to go home like I would take their land away. Called this river red and taught me songs of Jacques Cartier. They were full of words for things brown people didn't ever really say. Yeah, they were full of names like Ile de Chain for a place brown people didn't ever sign away. Hey, Madame La, I was born here just like you. In this idea of a country we're all living through. Hey, Monsieur La, I was born here just like you. In this idea of a country we're all living through. Just like you, in this idea of a country one little song cannot undo. Hey, Monsieur La, I was born here just like you. In this idea of a country ten thousand songs might still undo. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Kyle Flemmer, the publisher at The Blasted Tree. I've been involved in small press for almost a decade now, and the thing that really grabbed me about it in the first place is that small press is for everybody. Uh, you don't really need a fancy degree, or a lot of money, you don't need much experience, you don't need a big network or a marketing plan. All you really need is like a printer and a stapler or even just a photocopier at the local print shop and away you go. You too could be printing and stapling your poetry and putting it in people's hands, becoming an illustrious published author in the process. Uh, the thing that I love about this is like if everyone can be a publisher then everyone can be a, a published author. It uh, reduces barriers to entry and it's a great way to build community and get your work out there in the process. So uh, I, knew, I knew small press was for me when I knew that it could be uh, an exciting path for anyone who wants to get involved. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Valencia. I've been a member of Meet the Presses Collective since 2015. I got my start in publishing through small presses. I found it to be the most diverse, experimental, and open environment in literature. Through small presses, I've been exposed to handmade books, books crafted out of uh, sustainable materials, books on visual poetry, flash fiction, hybrid literature, books that are mazes, and many other inventive forms. In my time with Meet the Presses, I've learned that the passion for literature is not just in the writing but in the binding, the cover, the formation of a work of art that encapsulates literary worlds. From chapbooks to small prose books, the accessibility in small press is the foundation in which a lot of the publishing world could learn a lot from. It's a pleasure to be part of the history of Meet the Presses and to continue the work that the BP Nickel Award pushes forward.
Hello, uh, my name is Lisa Robertson, and I'm here to read you um, an excerpt from a poem called Utopia that was published in my chapbook, Russo's Boat, which came out in 2004 and looked like this and was published by Nomados Press in Vancouver. Um, the publishers um, are Peter Quartermain and the poet Meredith Quartermain. Um, the two poems included in this chapbook have um, um, made their way into a longer form of the same project. And um, that was published this year by Coach House Books and it's called Boat. So we shrunk it down from Russo's boat to boat. And I will um, read you a part of a long poem called Utopia. Um, I should say I'm recording this reading at three o'clock on the afternoon of October the 3rd. And I will begin midstream in utopia like this. It began at three o'clock one October afternoon. What was I to understand of it? Its intent is mordant. It's weak and it wants beauty. It was here that I first observed this question of withheld Arcadia. It leans on the transparent balustrade. It is a continuous astonishment. It arrives at nothing but the rolling year. It always means everything. For instance, to do, to be, to suffer, to bark, to like, to crumble, to sit. In each verb, I've entertained ambition. It was only half past eight, but the month was April. With greeny pleasure, I wrote. This is the melodic contour of the cry of a kind of fruit dove. People emerged. My body became apparition in the hot, thin air. I wrote a story of beginnings, of beginnings, of meat, of words. I wanted to realize failure as a form of tactile thought. I intended to be nourished. Because of the signals communicating from the fluorescent cavity of the chest, because of the vaults of touch, because of the feral knowledge molded by the lips, because of the nearness to armies, because of smallness, I intended to be nourished. And then we went visiting. It was the spring of my 35th year. Since there was no solitary and free space, I made one with my own boredom. I saw that the religiosity of the comprehensible comprised one strand. Seeing is so inexperienced. It's not my job to worry about futurity. I'm on the inside of anything I can imagine. I wanted to distribute the present, not secure the future. What could I say that was lasting? The smell of sex on my fingers was your sex. Terminological difficulties arose. That fine day, our sunning species was so colorful from the little island to which I had swum. I can but equal them. It was summer, a hot day. Who painted the heavy rose? We devote one of our meetings to love in elaborate and intact theory. There are all kinds of experimental protocols. Tell me if you haven't had grief, a kind of gulped anger or strange freedom. It could only ever be transcription. I would like to enter a bookshop for the coolness and rustle. I am ordinary and sometimes 
frightened. Clouds are really beginning to exist for me. Always I think I shall save the idea for the future when I do not. When will we go to reason? When did they cease to be rooms? Twilight is like mercury on queer moss. The day in the rooms passes. I noticed the viscosity of dimness. I felt my arms love. A man is shouting into a civic distance. Please help me, please. A distant thin ribbon of cirrus ebbs into space. It was very early in the morning, like radios, opiates, the grain's endless currency and surreptitious edge, buildings torn out of earth and forgotten. Light could be tasted, had an odor like a tin can. Girlhood is a landscape across the morning earth the pangs of a dying economy. It was 1993. Yet everything that happened was real that summer evening. What's the difference between a behavior and a game? The world with its streets, interiors, railroad stations, restaurants, sports cars, and beaches gains access to surface. It is not true. It shines from our faces. In the hinge between these things, a resemblance appears. I wanted narrative to be a picture of distances ringed in purple. Then I wanted it to be electronic fields exempt from sentiment. Then I wanted it to be the patient elaboration of my senses. Both are mixtures of enigma and proof. Beneath the culpable excesses, the whole process depended on this same problem of decay latent within my attention. An absurdly dominant wakefulness structures the light. A style creeps up the hills. It is not true either, but it is made from local materials. On the second Monday of October, at 10 minutes past 11, I'm referring to the scrim upon which one scribbles the unaccountable, the pliable and monstrous inner rooms, the solitary shimmer of the video installation. I was drunk on well-cut gabardine, jets and failure. I took literally everything that transpired about poverty and ambition. The account was probably inaccurate. Thank you. <laughs>